Hello, and thank you for joining. My name is Alana Tufford, and today I'm happy to be your moderator. On behalf of Barcodes Group and Honeywell, I'd like to thank you for attending our webinar, How Honeywell is Evolving Mobile Computing in 2021. We know your time is precious, and we hope you can gain some valuable insights. As promoted, one lucky attendee will win a $100 Amazon gift card. That winner will be contacted following today's event. Our presenters from Honeywell will be Marcus Logan, Director of Offering Management Software, and Scott Stetler, Director of Offering Management Mobility. If you have any questions, we invite you to use the Q&A feature of this meeting, and we'll work to address them following the presentation. Marcus, I believe you're first. The stage is yours. All right. Thank you. Uh, Scott, can you take us to the, uh, to the next slide here, please? All right, so I'm going to quickly just cover our agenda and what we plan to cover today. So we're going to just do a, a quick introduction of uh, Honeywell and some of our offering solution set and then go through uh, where we're going with our mobility edge platform and roadmap, and then try to leave a few minutes at the end for some Q&A. Then Honeywell, there's uh, four strategic business units that we, uh, that we operate in. Then there's a, a fifth um, strategic business unit that we have released, that we brought to market uh, a few years back and really focused on transitioning Honeywell from an industrial conglomerate to a software industrial. So we're really going through this uh, transformation across our organization to really focus on, on software and solutions and how we can improve um, our, our customers' operations and ultimately their, their bottom lines across the entire Honeywell. So as you see, let's go on forward, you'll see us talk a lot about uh, transformation and how we can leverage solutions to uh, address customer needs and problems in the market. Uh, next slide, Scott. So specifically in uh, productivity solutions and, and services, we're really focused on four primary verticals and, and being able to help customers in these verticals and improve their operations and ultimately their bottom lines. So uh, retail, uh, retail, distribution, logistics, and healthcare. And at the end of the day, we wanna improve business performance by empowering employees. So, so frontline workers that are leveraging uh, our devices, uh, the Honeywell devices, to do their day-to-day -day jobs and ultimately digitize that workforce and, and leverage that information, that data is just being uh, pulled from those devices to improve processes and, and provide data-driven insights. Um, we, we have four core uh, software solutions that we focus on uh, within our uh, offering set. And I'll quickly just touch on those, those four offerings and uh, a little bit about what their, what their capabilities are. But as I, as I mentioned, those four uh, verticals that we focus on, we've developed out these software solutions with the, with the focus on being able to address needs within these uh, verticals. So the first one, the, the far left that I'll talk to is operational intelligence. And essentially, operational intelligence is a uh, asset intelligence platform that can um, be complementary to an MDM solution and uh, provide this, this complete lifecycle of a device which uh, MDM can can provide, but also provide that, that visibility of, of assets and people that are leveraging those assets to do their day-to-day -day task and provide real insight to, to what's going on with that frontline uh, employee, the frontline worker. Uh, then there's our, our Smart Talk uni uh, Unified Communication Solution. So this is a, a secured all-in-one uh, unified communication, but what's different than the typical you know, unified communication that's really focused on knowledge workers, this unified communication can be uh, deployed on um, Honeywell devices and can also be leveraged in uh, desktop. So you're able to combine uh, communication across the entire workforce so that frontline workers can, can actually interact and communicate with frontline workers, uh, excuse me, with knowledge workers in the organization but also being able to connect frontline workers to customers. So being able to, to leverage the devices that they have in their hands as they're doing their day-to-day -day jobs to open up that uh, two-way communication with customers and improve, again, operations and customer experience. The, the third solution here that we have on the, on the slide here um, is voice guide at work. So uh, interactive and easy way to, to execute on workflows and leverage voice to be able uh, to communicate and, and interact and, and pull information from the system, actually uh, put information into the system. Uh, ultimately improving uh, workflow productivity 
and reducing the training time and errors required with some uh, workflow processes. And then last but not least on the far right here is, is FARI. It's a, uh, a solution that Honeywell has invested in. Uh, it's a predictive logistics platform that ultimately provides a single pane of glass across the entire supply chain. So be able to, to see uh, across the supply chain to be able to execute, collaborate and track goods across the entire uh, su supply chain. Uh, next slide. So as we, uh, as we look a little bit deeper at operational intelligence, this asset intelligence platform, uh, some of the challenges that we see customers are faced with is, is how do they manage and deploy and provision up to 10,000 assets? Um, customers are, are, are facing, customers are faced with uh, firefighting being very reactive to things that are going on. So, so the challenge is how can you problem solve in real time and, and have this in the invisibility within the organization? And, and what we see is a, a solution like operational intelligence that provides um, centralized provisioning, the ability to manage software, firmware, and OS distribution, um, be able to manage a device and, and provide this full uh, visibility across the uh, across the asset. And we're able to provide long-term value with this asset intelligence by, by providing a, a really strong set of, of tools to be able to manage the assets, to be able to, to process the um, the, the information that's flowing from the devices, analyze it and present it in a, um, in a way that a customer is actually able to take action from the, uh, from the information that's uh, being shown. Uh, next slide, Scott. Uh, and, and digging in more on the, uh, on the unified communication of smart talk, some of the challenges that we see is, you know, how do you provide this, this simple communication tool for mobile equip frontline workers? across these kind of mix of states with these knowledge workers, uh, customers that are interacting with, uh, with frontline workers. Um, how do you enable this safe, you know, enterprise-grade secure communication? So not only uh, voice communication, but, but maybe messaging with the, with the frontline worker to, to be able to, uh, again, help solve problems in, in real time. Uh, and what we see, again, is an immediate solution with our SmartTalk uh, application it has the ability to, to manage centralized user management, um, controlled features uh, around deployment and branding. So a customer may have their own applications that they want to deploy, being able to, to put your own brand on this application and provide secure uh, messaging, uh, voice over IP, uh, being able to do secure video calls as well as push to talk to have that quick communication. Um, and, and ultimately delivering long-term value, uh, being able to, to leverage the existing install of communication uh, technology, such as a PBX. So have that uh, seamless integration and, and interoperability with those existing PBX systems. Uh, being able to leverage uh, an SDK to deploy the solution again, and, and maybe an existing application or existing software to do this two-way communication. And, and strong flexibility, the, uh, the solution is, is essentially device agnostic, meaning that it can uh, be ran on, on uh, the Honeywell Android devices, can be run on uh, uh, iOS devices, as, when, as well as Windows desktops and laptops. So having this full uh, unified communication across these devices. And then the, uh, the next slide, Scott, let's quickly uh, touch on, on FARI here. So in the uh, predictive logistics uh, space, uh, what we're seeing is this, um, explosion of e-commerce growth over the last you know 12 to 18 months really being accelerated by what's going on with the uh, with the pandemic um, you know we've seen um, this e-commerce explosion uh, continue to uh, to happen and, and accelerate as things start to uh, to come down here where uh, buyer behaviors have just changed uh, some of the challenges that, that we see uh, interacting with customers is, is how do you improve your operational coordination and your delivery intelligence uh, to, to ultimately increase productivity? Again, we, we see a, a immediate solution is just uh, real-time visibility across the supply chain and uh, being able to deliver a superior customer experience. And in this day and age, being able to provide a superior customer experience is a competitive advantage and, and a solution like FARI can, uh, can enable that. 
uh, some of the long-term value that we, we see being able to be delivered is this operational control tower, being able to look across the organization, across the supply chain, and see what's going on and take action. Uh, delivering uh, delighted customers, so, so a customer is able to interact with the solution and see live ETAs uh, on the fly. And, and being able to, to leverage the, the information that's coming in from the supply chain, being able to, to leverage it and, and uh, be predictive in how we address issues that, that may come up and, and challenges within the, uh, across the supply chain. So from here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Scott. He's gonna talk a little bit more about things that are going on with the, with the pandemic and some of the permanent changes we've seen in, in, uh, in customers and consumers' behaviors. Scott, Thanks, over to you. Thank you. Um, so everybody, I, if you've learned nothing about Honeywell today, hopefully you'll go away knowing that we're nimble and agile, <laughs> even when we get the wrong deck uh, up on the screen. So uh, I'm gonna talk about our Mobility Edge solution set, um, our Mobility Edge platform that all of our mobile devices are built on. But first I'm gonna to touch on some of the key user priorities that drive our choices when we design new products. And I'll talk a little bit about retail and then a little bit about transportation and logistics or TNL. So <clears throat> change in 2020 has been consumer driven and consumers who are creatures of habit resist change. But once they've been forced to try um, new things and to change, they tend to stick with it. Um, and then retailers have to respond or lose those customers. So let me just ask you to think for a second, a little poll to think about in your own mind. Just ask yourself, what group has been the fastest at adopting e-commerce this last year in 2020? I'll just let you think about that for a second. The answer is boomers. Um, everybody is used to thinking about the classic image of e-commerce as a millennial with a credit card sitting on their couch buying, buying fashion. <clears throat> but in fact, the group that were the fastest adopters of e-commerce in 2020 were the baby boomers. In a recent poll I read quoted some of these boomers. One, one person said, um, I'm reading a quote here. I had my granddaughter teach me how to do this because of COVID, but now I'll never go back. So it starts with a need, but it, now it's so convenient, it's irreplaceable. And this applies not only to demographic categories, but also to product categories. Uh, by about a year ago, pretty much everybody on this call had bought books or shoes or toys online, but many perhaps had not yet bought milk and carrots online. But now many people buy, gr buy uh, groceries online and other categories. I recently bought um, grass seed. I bought grass seed online from the local uh, hardware store. It was delivered. I seeded my lawn with it. Um, I never would have done that before, but now I my behavior has been changed by what's happened over the last uh, over the last year, and uh, and it continues. E-commerce's uh, growth has been the highest in its history in the last year. Uh, so now retailers have to adapt. They have to change how they do things to keep their customers, um, but they have to do it carefully, of course, because they don't want to implement new processes that, um, because of a failure to execute, end up costing them money and they have to reverse them. Uh, some of these changes are radical. So for example, some retailers are actually closing stores and turning them into micro fulfillment warehouses. Uh, so instead of customers roaming the aisle, you have uh, em uh, employees roaming the aisle with pick lists on mobile computers, um, filling up bags to be picked up by customers or to be delivered uh, to consumers at the doorstep. <clears throat> and, and not all of these uh, uh, consumers are the same. Um, retailers need to offer choice if they want to keep their customers. Some customers want to have their car loaded up at curbside. So I was at the grocery store this last weekend and there was this line of cars, people sitting in their car waiting to have their car loaded with bags. But others uh, like me, I'm okay with uh, paper towels and cereal being dropped off on my porch, but I'd rather pick out my own produce and go into the store. Um, so retailers need solutions that are flexible. They can't invest in a single uh, approach. They need a solution set that is flexible and agile and can be adapted to, to a range of solutions. Something that covers all, if not uh, most, if not all uh, solution sets or use cases. And so when it comes to fulfillment, making sure that goods are delivered when promised or uh, ready for pickup when promised is a key to customer loyalty. And as Marcus was just talking about, products like FarEye are, are critical in making that happen. In fact, expectation management is at the heart of customer service. 
And good, reliable, predictable, predictable service is the key to customer satisfaction. And so tools like that enable us to manage and optimize our service and generate that customer loyalty and maximize that customer engagement, which is one of the top priorities of every retailer is consumer engagement. All right, next. So <clears throat> it's all about turning retail associates into electronically enabled superheroes who can do all or almost all the jobs in the store with speed and accuracy with a minimum number of tools. So first, retailers can't waste workers' time. <clears throat> According to the US Department of Labor, labor represents about 20 or even 25% of the revenue for most retailers in most categories. And that's more than the product itself in many cases. So not a second can be wasted. Uh, in between supporting customers, employees perform complex tasks like replenishing inventory, merchandising, cycle counting, maybe they're doing uh, picking for a, for a click and collect order. So we need systems that streamline and error-proof these tasks. In fact, fundamentally, that's what, what all the solutions that we do provide do. They streamline and error-proof the work. Um, the employees need to get things done without making mistakes, but then they need to be able to move confidently onto the next thing without delay. So as a result, in part, employee communication is even more critical to execution than ever. Uh, working as a team, employees are more effective at everything, whether it's cycle counting or engaging with customers. So again, smart talk that Marcus was talking about. Um, click and collect needs to be simple from a customer's pers perspective, but for the retail, getting it right is complicated. Picking the right product, making sure it's ready on time, if it's perishable, it's not too soon, communicating between employees, managing team tasks, managing expectations with the customer. This is all very complicated. Customer loyalty is about consistently delivering a positive experience for the customer. So the product needs to be available. The customer should not have to wait too long to get it. And if there's a problem, returning the product should be stress-free and fast. Part of delivering a positive experience is making sure that the product that the customer wants is available when they need it. Uh, this is why RFID-based inventory management for certain categories like soft goods and apparel and footwear is critical because it enables 99% inventory accuracy, which is fundamental to being able to perform omni-channel fulfillment, which is at the core of uh, e-commerce. And finally, uh, while servicing the customer, all of the other businesses' challenges need to be observed. So these days, there are health protocols that need to be observed. Assets need to be managed and, and handled. Uh, loss prevention needs to be observed. All of these things are still critical, even while we're doing all the new things to service the customers. So now let's talk a little bit about transportation and logistics. Um, <clears throat> so these days, uh, TNL means everything from the factory to the consumer's doorstep. Um, uh, as, as Marcus uh, referred to it, the, the, the ability to see everything um, from the control tower across the entire supply chain. Uh, E-commerce is not only accelerating, but it's irreversibly changed to the, due to the health crisis. Um, some retailers are, uh, forgive me, I'm looking at my notes. So delivery companies not only want to maximize, optimize their ability to deliver, but they need to manage workers, not just to uh, ensure efficiency, but also to ensure compliance with rules of the road and with safety. And they wanna get the most out of their assets by optimizing routes and identifying problems. Um, so uh, our mobile device platform called Mobility Edge is the solution that we're building all of our devices on in order to ensure that we can deliver these capabilities. So what is the Mobility Edge platform? Mobility Edge is a lockdown integrated hardware software platform uh, it's at the heart of about 14 complete model lines, 15 model lines that we've built um, that all use the same uh, operating system and the same internal core compute system. Uh, our goal is to provide unmatched security lifecycle uh, to accelerate deployments and optimize business performance. The objective of the Mobility Edge platform is to enable our customers to, uh, to uh, do investments um, to create 
uh, complex but highly effective solutions. And they, these investments take time, they take money, they take focus, and they take um, commitment. And no customer, none of our users wants to build that sort of investment on top of a platform that they can't rely on for long life cycle, security, durability, and reliability. And that's what the Mobility Edge platform does. And one example of this is, uh, this is just one benefit of the Mobility Edge platform is our ability to deliver continuous unbroken compatibility uh, of every operating system from the launch of a given product all the way to the end of life of the Mobility Edge platform. So what you see here, what these green bars are, these represent the available operating system versions for each of these devices. So for example, we launched our CT40 product on Android 7 or Nougat, and it will continue to be available. We guarantee it until Android 12. And we're currently working with our uh, with Google and Qualcomm to determine whether it's technically feasible to support Android 13. Now, what this means is you're not going to see any gaps and, and every security uh, update that comes with a new version of the operating system will be provided. Uh, if you look at our competition's similar map, you'll see a lot of patches, a lot of open spots where they've skipped operating systems or they've terminated one model and introduced a new model on the new operating system. We provide coverage all the way through. And this benefits the customers for a variety of obvious reasons, but the main point I wanna make here is that it requires a true platform in order to be able to deliver this capability. Now, let me talk a little bit about some of the products um, uh, and I'll just give you a, a survey of some of the most important products. <clears throat> um, these are some of our most popular handheld computers. The CT40 is a, is a pocketable, thin form factor, a device that you can slip into your jeans if you're a, a retail store worker. Um, it's durable and has a four foot um, drop spec. And what I mean by that is that you can drop it on concrete and it'll survive from four feet across the operating temperature range. It's actually a very rugged product. Um, it's com uh, compatible with uh, the software that, uh, that uh, Marcus was talking about earlier. Smart Talk Unified Communications, for example, it's got a a push to talk button. So it's purpose built, purpose designed. The industrial design is optimized for the use cases that the particular users will be um, uh, needing to have it uh, service. Has a warm swap battery to avoid downtime. And it has best in class scanning from our flex range scan engine, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now, uh, I won't go into a lot of detail on the rest of the products, but I wanna give you a sense for the variety here and the um, kind of an understanding for how we optimize each product to be um, purpose-built for its particular application. So I just talked about the CT40. I'll talk a little about, about the CT60. In contrast, the CT60 has an eight foot drop to concrete. Um, it's a much more rugged product. It has uh, um, uh, SKUs that are compatible with non-incentive and ATEX standards. So it's designed for field mobility. It's designed for use in hazardous, rough and tumble environments, and it will survive those environments um, uh, really, really well. The next one over is the CK65. This is a device, as you can see, it has a keyboard. Keyboards are typical to most of the use cases in warehouses. This product's optimized for uh, warehouse use. It's got a 10-foot um, drop spec. I've got video showing this product dropping from 10 feet and bouncing on concrete like a basketball. It's got a three shift battery life, 28 hour battery, and also a version of it that operates in the freezer. So this is optimized for use in the warehouse. All of these devices are built on the Mobility Edge platform. And all of these devices, if you look in the lower right hand corner, are compatible with our universal charge dock. So if you have a charge dock that was purchased for use with the CT40, with the uh, quick swapping in and out of a plastic cup, very inexpensive plastic cup, that can be swapped out without a tool, you can now turn that charge dock into a CT60 charger or a CK65 charger. So the idea is once you invest in the Honeywell Mobility Edge platform, it's inexpensive for you to continue to using, use the Mobility Edge platform. Now, these are all handheld devices. We also have uh, vehicle mount devices. And what you see here is um, our two of our Thor products, the Thor VM1A and the VM3A. Again, both of these on the Mobility Edge platform, one with a keyboard, 
The other is all touchscreen. And then uh, on the, the right is the RT10A tablet. This is a rugged tablet that is vehicle mountable, but also of course portable because it's a tablet. All of these devices are on the Mobility Edge platform and they all come with a full line of accessories, including for example, our granite rugged uh, scanners. So if you go into a warehouse outfitted with Honeywell products, you'll very often see, um, for example, a Thor device mounted in the forklift and a granite scanner in a, in a um, uh, holster and the forklift drivers moving pallets around using the scanner to read barcodes perhaps uh, way up high on high pallet racks to determine where to put that pallet or where to find a pallet. I talked a minute ago about flex range. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, barcoding has been around for a long time, as long as I can remember. Um, and I think it's easy to convince yourself that barcoding is um, perhaps a, kind of an old technology, not much is going on there, but in fact, it really is a, an area of uh, stupendous innovation right now. Um, and in particular, if you look at the lower right-hand corner, I talked a minute ago about using a scanner where you can scan 30 or 40 feet away in order to read the address barcode on a pallet rack. Well, the way you do that in a warehouse is you use those two devices that you see in that photo uh, on the right. So if, you're, if your um, mobile computer needs to read 30, 40, 50 feet away, it uses one of those big heavy devices. And uh, the reason they do that is that until recently, that was the only way to get that kind of range. Those devices are big, they're heavy, um, they're really a necessary evil because they actually make the, the mobile computer a little bit less ergonomic, a little bit less uh, wieldy to handle. Um, what we've done with flex range is we've been able to put long range into a scan engine that's the size of the tip of your finger by implementing uh, really advanced optics and a dual, um, essentially a dual telescope apparatus with wide angle and telephoto in the same device. Um, and the magic here is that now, not only we can, can we put that long range in those big bulky industrial devices you find in warehouses, but we can also put that long range in the cell phone like device that you can put in your pocket. And the reason that's important is now, not only can I get this kind of range in a warehouse, but I can also get range in a retail store. So like if you're in a hardware store and you're trying to read the barcode up on a pipe that's you know, three feet above you, you can read that if you're a worker. If you're at the cash register, you can read in the bottom of the basket. And it might not seem like much because I'm really only reading a barcode from three feet away where I used to have to get to within 18 inches. But over the course of an eight hour day, Every few seconds saved, every little bit of frustration avoided really adds up. And we, we're getting huge, tremendous feedback on this flex range scan engine because of that just accumulated benefit of having a scan engine that gives us this added uh, capability. The other thing about the flex range scan engine is that because it has these dual telephoto and wide angle imagers, we're able to do some pretty nifty tricks like in, uh, in a delivery situation, um, Back in the, during the holidays, I had uh, I was sitting in my home office. I was looking out in the street. The delivery guy came up. He walked up to my porch. He had a package. I walked to the front door to take the package from him. He put it on the ground in front of me on my porch. Stepped back, took a picture of my package, my porch, and me. Stepped forward, picked up the package, and handed it to me. Why did he do that? Well, the reason he did that is because a few minutes later, a photo of that package having been delivered was stored in a database somewhere and appeared on a text in my, in my iPhone, indicating to me that that package had been delivered. Now that took him an extra second or two to do that. And it also required his compliance in following through with that use case. With this device, I can actually take that photo and read that barcode from three, four, five, six feet away without bending over, without stretching, um, and save that precious one or two seconds ensure compliance of the employee, and just get things done faster. I asked uh, one of these delivery people once um, how long, uh, um, how many uh, packages they deliver, and they said during peak season, it's well over 100 per day. So you can do the math. If you save a few seconds with every single delivery, eventually you save a lot of money um, over the course of a year with one employee and with thousands of employees it becomes really, really uh, a big deal. 
So that's the benefit of this technology. And we're continuing to invest in this technology. Our mission is to be the is to have the best barcoding technology on the planet. And so we have another FlexRange XLR product coming out in Q3. I'm not in a position to say much about it now, except to say, stay tuned. Uh, it's really gonna break some records in performance. Um, now, one other thing um, about the CT60 XP, I talked a minute ago about how it has this eight foot drop spec um, and uh, you, know, you can drop it on, on concrete and it'll survive. This is the third version of this product. We started with the CT60 and we had a second version and now the XP is the third version. And we've really improved this over time and we've really learned a lot. Our engineering team is, has uh, acquired a lot of additional expertise. Ruggedness is not just about slapping rubber on the corners of the device. A lot of times you'll see a mobile computer and, it, and its ruggedness appears to come from just having kind of like rubber patches on the corners. Um, that's not how to get the most ruggedness. The way you get ruggedness is number one, you design the device so it's hard to drop because the fewer times that it drops, the, the less likely it's gonna get broken. But then you start to design in ways that protect particular components. You don't have to make it ugly and big and bulky. You can actually design in this capability um, using industrial design techniques that retain um, ergonomic usability, and frankly, aesthetic, uh, aesthetically pleasing appearance. Um, one of the, uh, and, and beyond that, on uh, the external elements, there's all you can do on the inside, like the, the particular types of adhesives you select, making sure that the lenses, the um, display screen is optically bonded. All of these things are very high tech ways of ensuring that this device, even though it's a handheld computer, is rugged enough that if you drop it from eight feet from, from basically the ceiling in many houses, it'll hit concrete and bounce and you can pick it up and use it. Now, mobile payment is something that's becoming more and more important. Again, getting back to the retail environment, um, as uh, retail uh, undergoes these massive changes, mobile payment is becoming more important to ensure the ability to do fulfillment. Um, and so uh, Honeywell works with a number of partners to provide mobile payment accessories. These are kind of sled devices. Our uh, computer slips into a uh, card reader from someone like um, uh, Verifone or Ingenico would go into and uh, you run it software on the device and now you've got a mobile payment device with a card reader. And we've got people using these devices and we've worked with a number of partners that provide those accessories. Uh, but also what we're working on now is tap to pay. So tap to pay means without adding any bulky accessory to your mobile computer, you just take your credit card and you've got your mobile computer and you're able to just tap the credit card. And I know you've seen this uh, before in certain venues. Um, our objective is to be able to, um, to implement this on our mobile computers uh, sometime over the next 12 months. Um, <clears throat> this way you can uh, enable not just the employees that are uh, that have the accessory, but any employee with a mobile computer could take payment from a customer. That's going to increase conversion rates in a retail setting um, and thereby raise sales um, in the retail setting. But also I've actually talked to delivery people who would like to find a way to actually do cash transactions, or I should say credit transactions at the front door. So they can actually come to the, the, um, the house um, and uh, provide a service, perhaps it's pick up a package and take payment right at the front door. So this is gonna, uh, the ability to do this kind of payment is really gonna revolutionize a lot of businesses. So that's in process now, within a year. Now, um, a little bit about Mobility Edge. I've been talking about the Mobility Edge platform. What comes next? The Mobility Edge platform was launched in 2017. Um, part of the Mobility Edge promise is that all the Mobility Edge uh, models launched on that platform will continue to be available till 2025. So beginning of 2025 is the when the end of that platform happens. Um, this is part of what is required in order to deliver, the, to deliver that stability that I was talking about earlier. Um, but we're halfway through the mobility edge lifetime lifespan now. And so we need to start thinking about the next generation. And that next generation is mobility edge two. Mobility edge two, first two products launch here in 2021. Those products will be available through 2028. 
and they will come in a variety of form factors. And you can see some of the pictures there. There's a wearable device there. There's, um, there's a thin form factor. There's a warehouse device um, and a couple of others. And I'll talk a little bit about two of those in a moment. And all of this, this, these platforms are founded on the software that Marcus was talking on at the beginning, operational intelligence, which is all about inventory visibility, smart talk, which is about unified communications, guided work. Um, we talked about far eye, um, and then also something that uh, we call mobilityedge.ai, which is a research project where we're applying advanced artificial intelligence to the sensor data streams coming out of these devices in order to extract useful business information for you to, uh, to use to gain insight into your business. So <clears throat> Mobility Edge 2 products coming in 2021. The first one is the CT45 XP. CT45 XP is backward compatible to the CT40 I started talking about at the very beginning. Uh, it's aimed at hard goods retail, hard goods retail, grocery and transportation and logistics. It's actually substantially more rugged than the CT40. We've applied the, the te technical learnings that I was telling you about earlier. This product will bring Wi-Fi 6 um, to the market. It'll be the first Wi-Fi 6 rugged computer available on the market and guaranteed support um, all the way through Android 14. And we'll, we'll uh, be working on delivering Android 15 as well. This product be available through 2028. So again, the concept here is we want to provide a stable platform that you can build a solution on. And then a slim form factor version of the same essentially uh, core computer that we'll call the CT30 XP will come toward the end of the year. This is more like a cell phone in form factor. So necessarily it's not quite as rugged, but it's lighter weight and it's targeted more at uh, soft goods retail and healthcare. And I talked a little bit about it. Here's a bigger picture of the CT45 XP. Again, very rugged. And, and specifically, this will uh, survive a six foot drop to concrete uh, across the operating, system, uh, operating temperature range. And a variety of other uh, features, including a full HD display. Um, more and more people are expecting that higher resolution in the display these days. And then the CT30 XP, uh, like I said, you can see the pictures there. It's a slimmer form factor. It's more like a cell phone um, in terms of uh, size and shape, but much longer life cycle, much more rugged. It's got a scan engine inside. In particular, this particular device has the flex range scan engine. So with this uh, mobile computer, you can read in a retail store, you can read a UPC label from a couple of meters away, from about six feet away. Um, as, as an example. So that's the kind of range you get from that barcode and those seconds add up over time over the course of the day. Just like the CT40, guaranteed support on Android 14, all the way out to Android 14 and possibly Android 15 and Wi-Fi 6. Uh, so what about 5G? Um, Honeywell also has 5G Mobility Edge products coming in 2022. It's a little premature to be, for me to be talking about exactly what they are. Um, but let me do talk a little bit about um, you know, where the utility is with 5G. Um, when 5G adds value, um, it, it's when you're gonna take advantage of the particular characteristics of 5G. Largely, those are things like the much higher throughput, uh, lower latency. Um, these are the characteristics that are gonna enable new applications on new types of hardware. So I'm talking about augmented reality, I'm talking about robotic systems, I'm talking about autonomous devices. I'm talking about wearable devices, natural language interfaces, uh, heads up displays, that sort of thing. That's when you really need that 5G capability in a mobile device. 5G offers really very little value in handheld mobile computer use cases currently being used today. And there are a few minor exceptions, but for the vast majority of use cases, um, it, it really offers little value. Um, so when should you continue using 4G? I was talking to one of the number, one of the top three uh, cell phone um, uh, service companies in this country just the other day. And they told me that their 4G network will continue to be up for at least 10 and possibly as long as 20 years. 
10 to 15 years um, in most countries, um, and this particular carrier I was talking to was in the US, um, 4G and 5G will coexist. Uh, and in fact, 4G performance will continue to improve because 5G is built in part on 4G. The two are more or less integrated. And as a result, some of the attributes, some of the benefits of 5G will accrue to 4G users. So when should you continue using 4G? You should continue using 4G where you're currently using it successfully. Um, so new 4G devices like the CT45, they're gonna deliver better performance, functionality and productivity, but they're gonna deliver them at lower cost and less business risk than previous generations. So you're riding that learning curve, that 4G learning curve that's gonna allow you to get more benefit out of those devices at lower cost. Um, you want to invest in 5G in those new applications where 5G drives real benefits, like I was talking about before, you know, heads-up displays, augmented reality, and so on. Um, and a lot of solutions and products based on that will be coming out um, over the next couple of years. I'm happy to answer other questions about 5G afterward. <clears throat> um, and now that's the end of the uh, presentation. I'm going to kick it back over to Alana, and uh, we'll be ready to take some questions. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for that presentation. I have collected some questions that have come in. Uh, we have two questions that are somewhat similar, so I'm going to say them both and you can answer them, hopefully. Uh, is there any tablet that supports Windows 10 Pro? And the second question is, we're still using Windows mobile devices. Will Honeywell offer any more Windows devices in the future? Um, so uh, I'll take the second question first. So. Uh, uh, Honeywell does continue to offer uh, Windows 10 uh, devices, tablets, and vehicle-mounted computers because Windows uh, continues to be um, an operating system of choice in warehouses, and that's where we see those, um, those devices being used the most. Um, I regret, I don't know the answer to Windows 10 Pro, so what I'll do is I'm going to get back to Alana with an answer to that question so she can send it out to everybody. I'm sorry I don't have the answer to that one. That's okay. Uh, next question. It'd be cool to see if my workers are using devices where they're supposed to be in their assigned zone rather than taking breaks. Can Honeywell solve that? Sounds like a Marcus question. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me take that one. Uh, so I don't want to come across as, as uh, big brother, but we do have the capability with uh, operation intelligence solution to actually um, with check in, check out uh, functionality be able to to have a, a frontline employee check out a device so you know which device is assigned to the employee and then leverage some of the capability around um, locationing to understand where that device is at. So, so we do have that ability to, to give some insight to where our device is and how it's being, uh, being utilized. Perfect. Does Honeywell use operational intelligence internally? I'll, I'll take that one as well. Uh, so Honeywell does use operational intelligence uh, internally. We do have a few um, warehouses within our operations that are, are leveraging operational intelligence, primarily some of the use cases that, that we use internally around uh, battery management and again, providing that insight around, uh, around batteries. So, so we do. Um, I can add a, a little bit to that. Um, uh, so Marcus was just talking about the batteries, um, the, the fact that operational intelligence provides a lot of uh, value with batteries. I'm in the middle right now with some of my product managers developing our next generation, one of our next generation products. And uh, it's always a challenge to make some of those trade-offs <clears throat> regarding batteries. You know, how, how big should it be? You know, how do we trade off weight against uh, battery life during the day? Um, should we do wireless charging or not? What's the cost of wireless charging and so on? How do we decide those trade-off decisions? And uh, we have a couple of customers in the retail space who are using operational intelligence to, to have visibility into their assets. And they have a ton of data on battery usage, how, long they, how often they get charged, how long they get charged, do they get charged fully to capacity, just the behavior of, cost, of users as they use our devices and as they charge and discharge those batteries, um, there's just a ton of information. And we've been able to look at that information and um, really get insight into how those batteries are being used and make some really tough decisions about our next product design. And I think the same sorts of insights accrue to, the, to the, uh, those retailers 
their ability to look at that data and the richness of the data and just extract useful information and make decisions about how to manage those assets and get the most out of those assets is really profound. Yeah, and, and I'll uh, maybe jump on what Scott said there. Um, operational intelligence really allows our, uh, the Honeywell devices to become IoT gateways for that frontline worker. So, so I'll just think of all the uh, challenges with, with digitizing an operation well. So this is a way to actually digitize and, and create this virtual uh, uh, twin of the operation and all the information that flows from those devices. So, so that's another strength of the, uh, of the solution with the hardware and the software being able to, to really see, have that deep insight to what's going on and, and not just to have the insight, what operational intelligence being able to take action with that insight. So, so something comes up around bad batteries, you can actually send um, an action down to the device to, to give direction to an employee to, hey, that's a bad battery that needs to be placed in a, um, in a, in a location for, for managing those batteries and go get a new device that'll get you through the shift. So again, I just wanted to <laughs> jump onto what Scott said there. So, so Marcus, actually a question just popped up that, uh, that you should answer. It says, to access things like information on battery usage and cycle counts, do you have to have operational intelligence or are these items exposed in the API? Uh, so the API was a, a generic question. So let me answer it this way. Um, some of that information can be exposed in the uh, operational intelligence API. There's also APIs that we um, have available and ways to connect to the devices at the edge. But uh, the, the short answer oh. is yes. <laughs> okay. Perfect, moving on. Uh, does anyone have a wearable product plan? We do have a wearable product plan and it's um, unfortunately a little bit premature for me to, to talk about it. But I, <clears throat> one of the things I talked earlier about mobility edge.ai um, and the fact that uh, there's all this useful sensor data coming uh, from the edge. And so we have a number of devices where we intend to be able to use that, that uh, sort of uh, information. Um, uh, talked about 5G and, and um, heads up displays and those sorts of things, all wearable devices. And then of course, there's the classic wearable product um, where you essentially have a, a, a scanner that's worn on your arm or on your hand that allows you to have your hands free for moving things around. Um, so we have a couple of devices, scanners um, that work like that now, and they're very effective uh, scanners. One's called the uh, 8680i uh, that I encourage you to look into. I didn't have it in this presentation. Um, and then we also have uh, a, a mobile computer planned in our 2022 roadmap, which again, premature for me to go into too much detail on, but please stay tuned. Um, look forward to telling you about that in the future. Perfect. We have about three more questions. Four more questions. Uh, what scan? What scanners do the handheld computers support natively? It was a two-part question. I'm not sure if that was the accurate way to depict that. Uh, I see the question it says, "What symbologies?" Yeah. So um, virtually all of the symbologies that you're used to seeing in a warehouse or a retail or a healthcare environment. So, uh, and, and I'm not a scanning expert, so I won't be able to recite a list of them, but. The familiar ones, you know, include code 39, EAN, UPC, you know, QR codes, two by two um, barcodes, all of those standard um, uh, uh, symbologies in a variety of sizes, whether it's 100 mil code 39 on a pallet rack address or, you know, a package on, on somebody's doorstep, uh, we can read pretty much all of those. Um, and those are, are, are read natively. And then there's also, um, there are also some somewhat more specialized uh, codes like direct, direct parts marking, uh, where we have some software that you can add to the device in order to read that. And, and there are a few others like that. I hope that answers the question. Uh, does your company offer any solutions for service industries? I would like to say on behalf of Barcodes Group, absolutely we do, uh, but we'd need to know more details, but... Uh... Anything on Honeywell's side that you could say solutions for service industries? So I, I mean, I'm going to ping off of what Alana just said, and the answer is yes. And we rely on um, on expert partners like Barcodes OCR in order to to have access to those industries and those 
services. So we, we provide technology and we provide solution elements and then folks like, um, like uh, Barcodes creates those solutions for those, uh, those industries. Um, so I, I talked um, <clears throat> about the many different devices that we offer. Um, you know, we have, for example, the CT60 is a very popular product. That's the CT60 XP. I talked about it being very rugged. I had a picture of some of the ways we made it rugged on the slide, eight foot drop spec, IP68, you can put it underwater. Um, and it's really a perfect field mobility device um, for use by people who are out in the field. And I've seen it used in a variety of, uh, of applications that would, that would conform to what you would call a service, uh, service industry. Hope that answers the question. Perfect. How does Honeywell license the operational intelligence for field service devices? Is it part of the sale or licensed early solution? Let me, let me take that one. Uh, so operational intelligence is a SaaS platform and it's uh, licensed separately. It can be purchased in uh, uh, 12 month, 36 month and 60 month uh, increments. And we do have some uh, capability to be flexible in some of those uh, licenses as well. Perfect. Yeah, Alana, I see one. Um, uh, can you review your field services handhelds again? The CT60 is a very ruggedized unit, but I saw some other items. Yeah, I'll just summarize them. And if you want to go to the website, you can get tons of information about them or talk to your, your barcodes um, sales rep. Um, <clears throat> so uh, CT60 is that very rugged touchscreen device. Uh, so lighter weight, somewhat less rugged, still very durable, but somewhat less rugged device is the um, uh, CT40 uh, product. And I talked about in our Mobility H2 platform later on in the year, we'll have a, a follow-on product called a CT45 coming, which is backward compatible with the CT40. CT40, of course, will continue to be available. Um, I also talked about a CK65. It's not a field service product, but it's a warehouse product. But that was also on one of the slides, had keys on it, which are really uh, what are required for a lot of warehouse use cases. And then we had the RT10 uh, tablet, which I depicted on one slide as a vehicle mounted device, but it's also, of course, a tablet. It's a rugged tablet, so it can be used in a variety of field service or field uh, use cases. So we've seen it used in field service. We've also seen it used in uh, DSD, direct store delivery, and, uh, and similar applications. Well, I think that's all the questions that we've we've had come in. Uh, so if you have any further questions, feel free to feel, please feel free to contact me. My information is listed on the slide, or you can contact any one of the companies within the Barcodes Group that are listed below. Uh, again, on behalf of Honeywell and Barcodes Group, we'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks very much. Thank you.